I'm sorry, go like what? If it, if it's JavaScript saves scripts in files, lowercase. We have leveled up, leveled up, leveled up. Programming, gaming, fitness. Jesse Warden. What up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Jesse Warden. Today we're going to talk about TypeScript. If you haven't heard, AtScript was a language created by the Angular team, which is a framework to build JavaScript applications. They didn't like ES6 because they wanted additional features that enabled enterprise applications to be built in a large team in a large scalable way. So they added features to TypeScript called AtScript. And Microsoft's like, whoa, hold up. Let's, you know, work together, tag team, crazy hand, master hand, and make it work. AtScript is now gone, and now they have TypeScript. So some of you, like, might have looked at TypeScript and said, you know, this is a lot better than ES6. Well, you're right. It is. What we're going to do is going to take all the code we wrote for Gulp or Babel, and we're going to make it work for TypeScript. So I'm going to focus mainly on just the actual compiler, some of the features that it has above Babel, and some of the things that we can do with it. It's basically the same repo that you were using before, like with the Gulp scripts. So we're not going to rewrite all of those. If you want, you can go look at that. But we're just going to modify it slightly to work with TypeScript instead of Babel, okay? The other thing for strong typing, if you're not familiar with what it is, strong typing is really just a way, instead of if you try to pass in a string, right, for doing number math, it'll say, hey, dog. Like, you can't add strings. You can't sometimes, well, not all the time, okay? But it's also for classes. So, for example, if I pass in a gladiator and it's expecting a weapon, right, to do some weapon math on, you know, what, how strong a weapon is, the compiler will say, hey, you can't do that. If you want to pass in weapons, not a gladiator, right? So the compiler helps you with that, finds the bugs, you don't have to write unit tests, blah, blah, blah. We're going to start from scratch. So let's go make a fizzolder. Gulp, TypeScript, basics, yo. Actually, I shouldn't say yo because people confuse that with yeoman. I hate being copyrighted, bro. We're going to open our tiz terminal and make it bigger, bigger, bigger. Shrink it down a bit and then make it bigger, bigger, bigger. CD, change directory to the software development, gulp, TypeScript. Uh, I thought it was in there. Is it in there? Yes. CD, gulp, TypeScript. There we go. All right. Now we're going to do our NPM init. And if we do a Y, my good friend Ben Clickenbeard taught me this. If you do a Y, it just accepts all the defaults. So you don't have to like go blah. I'm sorry. Go like what? Sorry, folks. You only get that one time. Unless you hit the rewind. So it'll output our default package JSON in there. You can see it actually has saved it right there, so we don't have to do it again. Fantissimo. Cool. So we're going to go install some default things first, but let's go grab and merge and modify from the other project. We already have some dev dependencies over here, so we're going to grab them all, okay, except... Except for the Babel, we don't want that. So we'll do that, and we'll do a cool little trick called npm install. It automatically looks at your package JSON, identifies all the dev dependencies there or dependencies, and says, hey, what do you have installed and what not? If you don't have it, I'll go install it. So we'll let it go do its thing, and we'll install a new one. Now, you can install npm install TypeScript if you want. You can also install it globally with a dash G, and that allows you to play with TypeScript in your command line. Again, I'm not a command line guy. I think it's lame sauce. I don't enjoy it. I like buttons. So what we're going to do is install Gulp TypeScript, and what that does is it's a plugin for Gulp to allow us to compile TypeScript code. To do that, we go npm install Gulp TypeScript, save dev, let it go do its thing, go to the interwebs, install our library, get lots of coffee. When we click the screen, what wow, you can see it's got gulp TypeScript. Oh. So we're gonna take our gulp file from our other project, copy pasta, save as gulp file, bro. Paste it in, and we're gonna change the Babel. Okay, so we're gonna take that out. We're not gonna use Babel anymore. And we're gonna comment this task out because I'm gonna show you how it works. So let's just test to make sure everything's good, everyone's happy. So we'll go gulp. Hello, right? Our good level one diagnostics. Like Star Trek or something. Cool. So our basic gulp works. We got a hello. We are co rocking. We've got it working, bro. First thing to do is to import the epic plugin. Let's call it tap script. We'll acquire it as gulp TypeScript. Okay. We'll scroll down. 
create a gulp task for TypeScript it. We want to take our code that's TypeScript, convert it to JavaScript, ECMAScript 3 or 5. Up to you. Up to me. Up to us. Up to the team. Up to the President Reagan. He's not president. So let's copy our index file so we have a basic one. Okay. To make a source folder. Whoa, hello. Save it to our source folder. Index.html. We are awesome. No, you are awesome. This is TypeScript to ES star. Because it could be five or three. Don't really care. Add the end of HTML, save it, good to go. Let's write some TypeScript. Who have never messed with TypeScript. If this is your first time, you're actually like, what is this TypeScript? I understand we're doing this. If you go to the typescriptlang.org and click the play button, if you let this thing load, it's actually a text editor. So it seems to take a while for text to load, but it's actually a code editor. It gives you type hints and everything else. You can see that I've got some old code in here as well, right? We can actually define properties. So we can say first name is a string that defaults to Jesse. So the cool thing about that is you'll notice off to the right here, it'll actually set the default value in the constructor and we can change it elsewhere. So if I say my default name is cow, Right? It'll set that in the constructor for you to actually default that property immediately and give it an instance property rather than object.prototype, right? which is very confusing and frustrating. And within the attack method, it'll do that. So you can still define it with the strong type. Don't worry about the, the casting for now. Notice there is no var. There is no var. It's simply just a class. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll copy paste this over to R. So we'll make our first class file in TypeScript and we designate it as a person.ts. TS stands for TypeScript. You don't actually save it as JS. You'll notice I also use a capital P to indicate a class file rather than a lowercase p to indicate a script file, which is traditionally what JavaScript does. JavaScript saves scripts in files, lowercase. We have leveled up, leveled up, leveled up, leveled up to utilize class files in .ts files. All right, so we deleted our babblet function. We're gonna create a TypeScript it, it function. TypeScript, it, 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 it. ribbit, ribbit. TypeScript function, it. Now you'll notice that we could probably just change our one function of babblet to TypeScript inside of our compilation. But I'm gonna write from scratch just so we get good practice. Return being good citizens source star dot star. Now there's one actual change. We're doing TS files. TS files are this are just a different file extension. Instead of dot JS, it's dot TS. TS represents your TypeScript. JS represents your output of JavaScript. Okay. There is no difference. They're both text files. The difference mainly is from you recognizing that those are TypeScript files and B, the TypeScript compiler expects dot TS files. Okay. So we're going to utilize that guy to make him happy. We're going to pipe it to the TypeScript function. For now, we're going to use the defaults. We're not going to configure the compiler in any way. Just whatever the default is. Here, here's some TypeScript. Compile it for me. And we'll gulp it to the destination of the build folder, just like we would for ES6 code through Babel. In this case, just rewriting it so you can see it's not that big of a deal to charge your client 20% to do DevOps or JavaScript. Cool. So we have TypeScript it. We've replaced our watch files with our .ts. And we're going to scroll down and make sure that it's inside of our watch. Right? So watch files calls that, calls that. we got our TypeScript, TypeScript it. Reruns our build system. Fantastic. We will rerun gulp. We will see that our page loads. So far, so good. We'll edit our person.js to trigger the compilation and check our build system. Oh, and look, there's a build folder with a person.js written in normal ES3-ish style JavaScript. Notice it has prototype. Prototypes are faster than closures. And notice it does break encapsulation by exposing that variable. There are various ways of configuring this. But bottom line is this JavaScript will work in all the older browsers. So just like Babbit, you can use the JavaScript of tomorrow, today, supporting the browsers of yesterday. You can do all that.
Right, it's fantastic. Go into our index.html and import this stuff and play with it. Let's see if it works, okay? So we'll go inside of the head tag. That's inside Jesse, not to the side. Inside the head tag, add a script tag. Let's let's organize this just tag, shall we? All right, script tag, source. We'll do our person.js. Not to be confused with tag. And we'll make another script tag at the bottom of the page, just to be polite. And let's play with this stuff. So let's see, can we make normal, normal var JavaScript stuff? So we'll go var dude equals new person. And then console out the dude. Let's see if, how it works. Console.log the dude. That's just your opinion, man. All right, so as I've been coding, it's been refreshing like cray cray. The dude is a person, first name cow with cow. Sounds good so far, so good. If we go into person, this dot first name, when we call the attack method, it should change to Jesse. So let's do that right now. What did we call the variable? <laughs> I'm so tired. I need more coffee. Wow. Oh, power up. Dude. Oh, wait. We're not in the code editor. Dude. Attack. So it calls the attack method. Yo. So we can still play with regular JavaScript, typing an awesome TypeScript, and it's good to go. And our name of the dude should now be Jesse. Fantastic. So as you can see, our TypeScript works. We can do it there. Now let's get into modules, something that TypeScript makes a little bit easier than Babel does with our we'd use an AMD with browser fire or not. I don't know. So we're gonna make this a little bit easier. Now there's one thing I want to point about about TypeScript's modules. For now, they support both common JS which is very similar to node, right? When you do a var variable equals require the actual class or script I'm looking for, right? With whatever module that you want to export from that script. It's all synchronous, right? So they support that as well. And they also support AMD support. AMD is asynchronous module definition. It's usually utilized with require. It allows you to load JavaScript on the fly. Some people like asynchronous module definition, other people like CommonJS, whatever. We'll go to our playground in TypeScript and look at modules. When it loads, you'll notice that it has a module, which is actually, it's similar to package if you're from those language, and it wraps that particular class. So when we wrap these modules, we were saying we were organizing this code to this particular module. Now, usually in the real world, people will map modules to folders, right? So they can organize their code, they can visually keep track of this folder in this module, maps to this module in the code, okay? So module could be sains, it could be com dot, Jesse Warden not saying whatever else. And you'll notice when it outputs it, it's a normal default module. If we take our person, which is not in a folder, let's go ahead and put it in a folder. So we'll say com new folder Jesse Warden. And we open com Jesse Warden, we'll put a new folder and call it bottle, bottle. You gotta say it with a Scottish accent, which I can't do. Although I like to think I could. Be neat and we will delete person JS from here we'll make a new one in here save it as person dot TS now it'll still compile it and put it in that particular folder at runtime right for JS and that's fine but what we're more interested in is actually organizing this person TS in this file with a module that maps to the folder it's in so we'll go com dot Jesse Warden dot bottle Okay, and a lot of people, especially from the JavaScript, do not end in it. I will because I am just obsessive compulsive. I'm not really sure. Again, comes out and generates the modules for you, encapsulated in its each own one, passing in the actual variable. So it's defaulting to the normal common JS way of doing things where you define a module exports. Now, it's not necessarily the actual module exports that you're used to. So it actually creates a global exports object. In this case, it's just a variable from our module, in this case, com, and actually exports it each one on an object if it's not already defined. Otherwise, it passes it in. So far, so good. If there's an object called com, define it, you know, use it. If there's not, define it, and then start adding our class libraries there, right? So just a simple object graph to store your classes. In this case, JavaScript objects. Reason we care. New file in here called Gladiator. It's not JS. 
It's TS. It's a hard habit to get rid of. TS. So we'll copy our person, paste it in. In this case, it's called a gladiator. And it extends person. Now, notice that being within the same module, we can get array away with it. In this case, we'll call our gladiator attack with two decimal explanation points. And you can also call super attack. So you can call the person's attack first, then your extension on it. And if you notice, we go into our ex our compilation. It ex adds the extends function for you. The gladiator has a super keyword, does a super apply. It also does the super attack call, so you can use normal super attacks. So if we go into our index.html, and in this case, create a new gladiator, okay, instead of a person, and we're going to import our person first, which is in what com Jesse Ward com slash battle. We'll do the exact same thing for the gladiator to import this guy. If we do that. The one thing we need to do is export our gladiator class and export our person class as well, so we can utilize them by other modules that want to import them and utilize them. To utilize these, we're going to create an app to bring everything together. So I'm just going to go right to the root. I want to make an app file or an app class, okay? And our app has no module. It's just a simple class, okay? And what he's going to do is import the gladiator and his constructor, which has no parameters for this point. We're not going to call super to get rid of all the defaults that it likes to add. Our constructor is going to go dude, new gladiator, and then dude attack. And you'll notice that it'll do two things. It'll call the super method first, and then his own method. So let's log him out. Okay. Call the attack method. So as soon as the application runs, it'll actually run this. So real quick, before we forget, let's go to our index and add him. Script source. In this case, it's just app.js, not ts. Now you could put him in a module as well and dot, dot, dot down to the folder structures outputting to the build, but we don't really care about that. So we'll get rid of our main script. So we have no script other than the import. We're importing our app, all right, into our base HTML. We need to add one adjustment, and that is to also look in the source for TS, not just the folders in TS. So we're going to change our gulp file to have an array. We'll stop our server, control C, or whatever it is you're using on Windows. Rerun our gulp twice because I have a bug to fix. LOL, 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 LOL. So we have our app.ts. To get reference internal modules to work, TypeScript has to add a comment at the top of the file to reference where all the files are. So if you're importing particular modules right, for your app, it knows where they are. So there are a couple ways to do this. You can use the import statement, the module statement, or you can just simply reference the module itself, very similar to how you would with global objects. You know the classes are defined there. So we'll do that way first so you can see how that works. So you'll notice I have class gladiator. Now normally classes are put on window, or in our case, window.com jessewarden.battle. In this case though, we're going to reference the internal modules and use a keyword to do so. In that case, it would normally be com.jessewarden.battle.gladiator. Now you'll notice that it's okay for the gladiator find person, but you'll notice that in the app.js, it actually cannot find the actual gladiator. We have to import it. Now, doing this with modules is relatively simple. So you'll notice that again, there is no window uh, person, right? Person on the global object, and there is no gladiator either. So there are two options. You can utilize internal modules if you want, and Gulp TypeScript will actually output these. Or you can use external modules, which is very common if you're used from CommonJS or RequireJS. So you have those two options you can utilize. For these modules to work without having to reference external files, we have to concatenate the files together. Now we've already done this in the past, but we'll, TypeScript's a little different. The TypeScript compiler will actually do all of those steps normally. The compiler will, all in one step, actually link and bring all those files in one file. Gulp, you're not supposed to do that. That's a completely separate step. It allows you the control and options to do that. We're going to modify it a slightly different. Gulp, the Gulp TypeScript compiler allows us to do that. First, need to bundle them up. Bring in the plugin for that, which in this case is, is concat. We'll require the Gulp concat plugin. 
we'll open a new command line and go npm install gulp concat save dev. Let it do its thing. While it's doing that, we will Corbin Dallas multitask. Scroll down. Now, before we actually copy it to the build, let's concatenate them into a single file. So we'll say concat to app.js. So it'll actually take all the files, including app.js, and then output it to the build folder in a single app.js file rather than the four that you see now. And then pipe that result to the build and we should be good to go. Great, so we've got our compilation, but as you can see, the app puts it in the wrong order, gladiators at the top before the class is even defined. The actual subclass or child class is actually defined before his super class is defined, right? Completely wrong, out of order. So we have to help the compiler out. One way to do that for internals is to actually define a triple comment. So slash, slash, slash reference path to the actual path that it utilizes, okay? So in this case, there is no folder path, it's just right next to it. So we say person.ts is a class you are referencing. Does this will work internally in an app? For him, we have to do the same thing. So we will say you are referencing the gladiator class, okay? In that case, this particular internal module. This is what's called an internal module. And we haven't done any exports for privacy or anything like that. Export it now, instead of getting undefined is undefined, if you actually look at the app, everything is put in the correct order. Person's done first, then the actual extends functions for the actual Gladiator class, and then the application he uses at the bottom. So all the class load order, import order, etc., is done for you by the compiler. Amazing. No more wire depth with class order and dependency order, blah, blah, blah. Just normal classes that work like you would expect them to, just about any other language, excluding Lua. Now when we do it, you'll notice there is no code, right, in our index.html. It's just the app linking it in. But our code runs, our actual app code runs. So if we go to our app.ts, it runs the Gladiator, prints them out, right? Prints out the dude and gladiator tag. And now you'll see this yo is actually his super class. So person yo sets his name, then the gladiator. So you can use the super keyword and you're good to go, right? Makes sense? Pretty cool. That's how you do some internal modules. I think I forgot now that I'm in lovely Orlando, Florida with sunshine and palm trees and 80 degree weather. Yeah. It was like 27 in ice where I lived. Ridiculous. Way too cool for me, bro. Now, one thing they don't tell you about TypeScript is external modules. Unlike local modules, external modules are actually each file represents the module. You're in control of actually what you export. Now, traditionally, internal modules have a large boost if you're using Visual Studio. It can write the actual file paths for you, right, little references, and actually indicate where the file is to help the compiler out. External modules are a little bit more like ES6, where the actual module system uses the module keyword. You choose which modules you wish to export, and you can control it. The difference with external modules in a larger code base is that you're not going to put all these modules in the same actual file. So John Papa wrote a really good article a long time ago with a friend where they talk about this and they, they show like what you can do with classes and modules. So I, I'm gonna reference that here. But what I want you to understand is that normal large scale applications are not gonna do that. You're actually gonna have, for the most part, a single class, maybe two, inside of a single file. The file itself becomes the module. Now, the problem with the module is that you have two ways to load it. Traditionally, CommonJS is used in Node. Node has the required keyword, loads classes all in a synchronous manner, and it expects them to be on the exports or module exports object. Where require.js will utilize the defined keyword with a minuscule amount of dependency injection and control the order which the classes are loaded asynchronously. Here's the problem. Not everybody likes require.js, and not everybody likes common.js. So you have an option. If you want to do require.js, TypeScript makes it really simple. It'll actually generate your, your TypeScript to look like require.js, and that's fine. What I've done for you is I've actually split the GitHub repo out for this into two. So you can play with local modules, or if you would like, you can play with both the common.js way of doing it and the require.js. Now, I'm not going to go in the require.js. It's really simple. Just put it at the very top of your script, require.js, configure your modules and how you want to load them. And when you generate that out with the module type of TypeScript, you're good to go. However, for CommonJS, it's a little tricky. If you're not running your TypeScript code in Node, what do you do? Right? There is no require objects or exports or module exports or whatever else. Well, you have this plugin called Browserify. And Browserify, what it does is it makes your JavaScript work in the browser just like it would work in Node. You have the require keyword, everything's synchronous, you're good to go. The problem with TypeScript is that she doesn't actually export that out. TypeScript tends to do everything at once, right? It doesn't have these keywords. There's a lot of uh, Gulp plugins, but I'm going to show you one that I've found. I've tested about three of them. And if you look at this modified, we have a couple new plugins I want to show you. So first is TSFI, 
What she does is actually work with the Browserify files to actually bring her in and get the TypeScript to work and be prepared for Browserify. So it gets all your modules set up and then actually injects the required keyword. If you don't run the TSFI, the Browserify actually on it instead and you go back to the other way, what it'll do is it'll run but it won't have the required keyword. It's like, I don't know what this require or exports or whatever keyword are. In Node, they're actually global variables, just like you would have the window object in the browser. Suddenly it's gone, right? And core concepts don't work. So Browserify says, all right, I'm gonna give you the exports keyword. You can find your classes on it, good to go for each class. So once that's done, then it compiles into TypeScript. Your classes look a little bit differently. So we're gonna convert our other code base from the local module back into this. If you have Git, I like to use Tower, but you can use whatever you want. I have a local, an external modules branch for you to look at or you can check out the local modules. So we're gonna start from the local modules, which goes back to our regular way, doing it, but we're still doing it for CommonJS. Browserify and TSFI are a wrapper around the TypeScript compiler, and Browserify runs first, TSFI makes it work with TypeScript. You can use internal modules if you like doing that little reference thing at the top. If you wanna to go up to the top and do this, I don't like that. I like each file being a module. However, CommonJS has some nasty things where they actually import the module itself and not the class. And if you're from traditional languages, that's just weird. We want to import the class. We don't want to import that. Now, if you're from Python or Ruby, you may be used to actually importing classes. No one cares. We're going to do external modules. Each module is a file. The file you import is a class. Feels natural. That's what we're going to do. First things first. Let's get rid of these uh, silly things. I'm going to make a new branch just so we don't break stuff here. By the way, if you're not familiar with branches in Git, it's just a different version of the code base inside of that. So we're going to go to github.com, Jesse Borden, gulp TypeScript basics. And if you look at this little tab right here, it's called branches. So if you click it, you can see the different versions of the code. Now, I've defaulted external modules into master, but if you would like, you can go back to the local modules to see how each one works and, you know, what your team likes. You might like local modules with required JS, yes, I don't know, or external modules with required JS yes, with common JS, yes, it's up to you. But we're going to make a branch so we can play with it here and show you. So I'm going to branch off of local modules. I'm going to call it our conversion. Okay. So I can play with this code in a safe environment. First things first, let's get rid of reference path. We are not using reference paths anymore. Each file is a module. In this case, apt.ts is a module. We're not going to use the module keyword, so this is going to be considered a global module. The next up is person. Now, the only thing person is missing from a module perspective is the export. Now, traditionally, you'd use the module keyword, right? Give it a name like cow or something, and then you would actually keep the class in here. And if you didn't export the class, then nobody could use it and import it. But that's weird. We're gonna treat external modules where everything is a module. So you, the, pretend that this little tab is the module keyword, then you get it. We have to export the person class to get out of this file. So when I import import the person TS file, I can use it. Very similar to require.js, right at the bottom you have to return a variable, so anybody who requires it can use it. Exact same thing, except it's synchronous, right? Everything is available immediately. There is no need to asynchronously load all your codes good, ready to go. And you can run it in the browser or node, same way. Okay, cool. That's our person. Going to get rid of that top. Use the export keyword. Only two changes we made. Next up, we're going to go to Gladiator. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to use the new import statement to import a class rather than have the compiler walk a chain of classes and do it metadata. And we're going to say import the person. And we're going to use the require keyword, very similar to node, okay? But we're going to point it to the local directory. Now, what this imports is actually a person module, not a person. So we're going to call it person module for now, because it's importing the person module class. We have access to any variable we exported on this. This person module, if we didn't export it, it's not available. So for now, we're going to get the person class, because that's what we exported on it. So think an object.property, module.class. Same thing, got it? And we are going to export the Gladiator class so other people can use it when they import him. Make sense? Cool. So far, so good. One more file to go. Our last file, our app ts file, we need to import the Gladiator module. Require the Gladiator file in the local directory. And take your Gladiator module and make sure that you're using the class that you exported or allowed others to access on your object module. Now I know this syntax looks verbose and weird, we're gonna fix it. But again, this is for multiple files, using a simple require keyword, just like you would in Node, so you don't have to do that weird reference path thing. And we're good to go. Now let's go fix our build. Let's go into our compiler and get rid of all of this. We are going to use Browserify. Now, I've already installed it. Browserify 
And again, if you're not familiar, Browserify just makes your client-side code work like node code. So you can use the require keyword. That's all. It's really all it is. There's a lot of complicated reasons about how it does it and blah, blah, blah. But if you go to browserify.org, uh, you can play with this stuff on the command line. So again, if you want to require the unique word and actually use it, you can do that. And just convert your JavaScript to do that. So you can have it a nice bundled code. Traditionally, Gulp and Grunt kind of bundle the code because they're doing minification, but whatever. This is the example that they give. We are going to write the compiler for it, so you can see. First, Browserify, and we identify the file. We're not going to give it a list of files. We're just going to say start app and walk it down the chain. We already used the require word keyword, so that's the hint to this compiler, Browserify. Remember the other keywords of the slash slash reference path? That was the hint to the TypeScript compiler, the order of classes. For Browserify, he's just going to use the require keyword and wrap his way down. So we'll say source app.ts and we're good to go. Next up, we need the plugin. Uh, so I'm going to do Browserify. I've already started. Next up, we need the plugin TSFI. Any plugin that tends to work with Browserify, whether Node or Gulp or Grunt, is Ifify. <laughs> That's just the naming convention they came up with. So in our case, we're going to go TSFI, which means TypeScript Ify, or take TypeScript and Browserify it. The TypeScript compiler does export CommonJS modules, but it assumes that the export or module export keywords are there that are not on the browser. They only exist in Node, so we're going to make them exist using Browserify. TSFI knows how to take TypeScript and make it work with Browserify. Good stuff. We've got that, but we need two additional weird plugins. A lot of these plugins don't know what a vinyl is. It's basically just a pointer to a file path. Let's leave it at that. Really complicated, but I'm trying to keep it simple for you. TSFI and Browserify will take these files and we'll use the vinyl plugins to convert everything for us. Our vinyl source stream and vinyl buffer. Don't worry about what they do, they just help us write the actual code, okay? They're just helper scripts. You'll notice a lot of Gulp is actually based mostly on Node with a lot of Gulp specific helper scripts that help the native classes or plugins, you know, from other things like Grunt actually work. So it's just normal, don't worry. Now, most Browserify things uh, might have a transform. It allows you to transform the code before it's completely done or after. In our case, we're actually doing a plugin we're using the plugin architecture that Browserify supports. So we're going to TSFI the code. So we're going to say, hey, Browserify, while you're modifying, let us play along as well using the TSFI stuff. After that, in our normal streaming architecture, we're then going to bundle the files together. So we're going to compact all our code into a single outputted file. We're not going to do source maps for now. So if you want to debug, get to that later. <laughs> source maps are a whole other ballgame. Bundled, we are going to pipe it, take the contents of the stream, and put it down the assembly line. And we're going to use the source vinyl path, right, representation of a path, to the app.js. So all our code that we converted from TypeScript into a big single file of JavaScript is going to be outputted to the app.js file. Finally, we're going to pipe our buffer, which is basically get all the contents of the file and get ready to write it. It's not peep. It's not French. It's pipe. Output it to the gulp destination, which is, as usual, our build directory. So it'll take app.js and put it out there. Browserify runs through our code and gives, finds the require keyword, walks down the path, makes sure all your classes are good, and then gives you a global variable called exports to put all your stuff in there. Then TSFI says, all right, let's make sure TypeScript works with this. So it works with require, make sure our code actually goes to that. Converts it all to JavaScript, and it still works with Browserify. I'll put it to app.js, the actual app.js app file. Buffer together and blast it to the build directory for app.js. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's actually a buffer call, not a buffer call back. Gotta pipe the results to the buffer. Silly, my bad. Looks like node code. You can use the code in both places if you'd like. We run our gulp twice because I have an error in the build. I'll fix it later. So you can see again, we have our gladiator. He's a dude. It's actually there. We instantiate him with yo when we call his attack method. And it calls the, the subclass attack method of gladiator, the actual class that extends person. Same exact type of code, same exact situation, just a different way to use modules. I like external modules. They're going to change. The TypeScript community and Angular community is changing them again. But for the most part, this is kind of the way we're going to do development. We're going to import things, use the require statement, import and control our expert classes. That's where it's going to go. The last thing to do is fix that ghetto syntax. So let's fix that right now. Messing with it, let's take a look at the actual app.js that it generates out. You'll notice that, it, it, again, it's doing things in completely wrong order, but, but CommonJS models in the way you import them takes care of that order or load initialization for us, which is great. Notice, however, that it's actually putting the classes on that global or 
semi-global exports object so you can actually access them themselves so when you import it it's importing the gladiator module and at which point you are exporting it out so you'll notice that we have person module that person here actually importing and borrow that now normally when you export a module pretending that there's a module wrapped around this just so you can visualize it in your head okay even though this file is itself a module we'll use the module keyword called like person uh, module thing. And now you can see it. Just because the word export is in there, you can export multiple things. I could export a function that does that. I could export anything I want. The point is I can export multiple things from a module. That is why we have to qualify it with this annoying name when we get it. In Gladiator, it's actually a person module. That's annoying. Most of us coding programming are going to put a single class and a single file thus in a single external TypeScript module. So one feature that TypeScript has, not Browserify, <laughs> is you export directly. You say, all right, let's, let's, let's not mess around here. We're gonna have export equal one and only one thing, in this case, person, our class. So when you export out the person class and you rerun your gulp, you'll get the error that says that it can't find person module. There is no such thing anymore. It is gone, fantastic. So let's get rid of it, call it person, and get rid of person module, rerun our gulp twice because I have an error. I'll fix it, I promise, someday. We can do a PR, and we're good to go. We now have nice, normal, obvious syntax. Import the class, use the class. Pretty simple, right? Very similar to how you Node know, does it, but we're using some TypeScript features in Browserify to get us the rest of the way there in the browser. Last one to fix is Gladiator. So let's fix him too to make our code a little bit cleaner. I'm sorry, Jesse, how clean is it? A little bit. Alrighty. Go to app.js and import the Gladiator class, not module. Get rid of that guy, he's silly. Good, now it looks like normal code. It's amazing. Run it twice. Chicken and rice. Rod. Console's good, everyone's good, compiler's good, and we're good. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is external modules for TypeScript. It's very similar to how you would be doing ES6. So just be aware that Browserify gets you the way there so you can write isomorphic code. All that means you can write portable JavaScript. It works on the client in the browser, and it works on the server in Node. Either, either system, it works. Same code, two different places. Write it once, use it everywhere. So that's why CommonJS empowered you know, the CommonJS model system utilized through Browserify is a nicer way to do it. And if you're used to other class-based languages with some form of control over packaging and namespacing or modules, whatever you want to call them, that's why people like external models, especially if they don't have Visual Studio to help them you know, change those file, file names and reference paths for local modules. This is going to change, but for the most part, the concepts are going to stay the same. So that should get you started. Again, my name is Jesse Ward, and I hope that helps get up to speed on how you can use TypeScript with Gulp. And you can use either language. Going forward, I'll probably stick you know, back and forth between ES6 and TypeScript. Anyway, you got any more questions, hit me up on Google+, Facebook, Twitter. Hit me up on email. I really appreciate your questions on Google+, here on the YouTube comments. Don't forget to subscribe, and appreciate if you like these videos, if they are helpful to you. Thanks for your time.